Hello, and welcome back to Tech Ambrosia. Today, I want to take a look at this weird Socket A board. Um, those of you who have been around the retro web uh, probably recognize this board, and yes, it is indeed that board. And um, the owner of it donated it to the channel. Very thankful that he did that, because this is a weird board, and if there's anything about me, you know, it's that I like weird boards. So the first thing that really interested me about this board when I found it, um, when it was offered to me, was that it's it's very small. It's it's micro ATX in size, but it's a very small micro ATX board. Um, micro ATX is in a few different sizes, generally only four slots wide, but this is pretty compact, even for micro ATX. The other thing that's, that was interesting to me is that we've got a universal AGP port here, and that's not common uh, really on anything, and it's a really good universal AGP port is one of those things that's going to really come in handy for, like, GPU testing, for example. And then the third thing that stood out to me was this single chip for the chipset. Uh, this is just a super I.O. chip over here. It mostly gives us, like, COM port and floppy con connection, and that's about it. Everything else for this board is provided by this single chip in the chipset, and back in the early 2000s, there was really only one company that was doing that, and that was SIS, SIS, uh, Silicon Integrated Systems. So this is a, definitely a SIS chipset of some kind, but I don't know exactly what. Uh, so that's one of the things I want to investigate today. The other thing is, I know this is a PC chips board. Um, I, I got that from the, from the original owner. Uh, and I've got a, there's a revision 7 marking up in the corner. And that's about it. So I've got to figure out what board this is first. Then I can find out from there what chipset it is and what kind of CPU support I'm going to be looking at. It's currently got a uh, Athlon Thunderbird 1.2 gigahertz, 100 megahertz frontside bus CPU in it. Even though it has a label here that says Duron 900, it does not have a Duron in it. Uh, the slots here for memory, you can see uh, we've got the telltale two notches, which means it's single data rate SD RAM. Uh, and then on the back, we've got I.O. And you can see we've got onboard audio and onboard video, as well as onboard LAN, which is not super common back in the day, especially on a chipset or on a board like this, which would have been a pretty budget board. So let's dig into this thing. I'm going to do a little Googling. And then I'll hook, out, hook it up to a power supply and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so, thoughts so far. Uh, this is a really interesting little board. It's it's not bad as far as, like, an SD-RAM socket A board. Uh, it's pretty performant. Um, I'm getting the same kind of performance I get out of anything else with the Vanta in it. So, that's promising. Um, as you saw, I looked up uh, what it is. I found where it was on Ultimate Retro. Um, so, I'm going to try and get the drivers for the audio chip. It is not that Realtek chip that I thought it was. This one up here, this is actually uh, an Ethernet Phi. So that is... Apparently the, the audio is something else, probably built into the SIS uh, chipset. So I'm going to go hunting for some drivers and see what I can dig up. I will be right back. Okay, um, jump cut to many, many hours later. I did a lot more 
and just download some drivers. I did some investigation. Uh, you can see I've got a sound card in here now. That is my uh, original Diamond Monster sound because I gave up trying to get the onboard sound to work. It's a C Media um, AC97. We can take a look at it here. It's that one right there. It's little. Um, I tried a ton of, of C Media AC97 codec drivers. None of them worked. Such a pain. I hate AC97 in Windows 98. It probably works fine in Windows XP, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'll just use my monster sound. It's fine. Um, what I did end up doing, though, is um, I started installing graphics cards in it to see what would work with this Universal AGP slot. Because if you know anything about Universal AGP, it's usually far from Universal. Um, and most of these cards are in a don't work pile. Um, I will cut to the chase and tell you the ones that do work. Um, pretty much any AGP 4X NVIDIA card seems to work just fine. The, uh, the Vanta worked fine, of course, that's what I started with. Um, also my TNT2 Ultra worked fine. Um, then also my uh, GeForce 2 MX here worked perfectly fine. And then this also, this lovely donation to the channel from Pixel Pipes, which is a uh, GeForce 256 DDR, and this also worked just fine in the board and was very fast. <laughs> very, very fast. Um, the, with the same settings I was using on the Vanta, uh, I went from 24, no, uh, 40 FPS. 24 FPS on the internal video, by the way, with no video card installed, just using the, the Sys integrated video, which isn't terrible. Uh, about 40 FPS on the Vanta, and then this lovely beast here um, pushed that up to uh, 140 FPS uh, in Quake 3 at 640 by 480 16-bit color. Setting Quake to the high quality preset, which I think is 800 by 632 bit color, uh, this still turned in over 100 FPS, which is just phenomenal. I love this card. I'm going to do a deep dive into it uh, later. Uh, anyway, the downside is the cards that don't work in this board seem to be pretty much anything that's AGP 8X. Um, as soon as you install the drivers and it tries to switch over to the fast AGP GART, it doesn't work. Uh, black screen, or uh, system freeze, it just it just won't do it. And uh, like I moved up to a <laughs> to a beefy power supply to see if it was a power issue because um, this is an early board, so everything's going through a twenty pin ATX connector. Like this, this is it. This is your power connector on this board. Um, so you need a nice beefy power supply for this thing. That wasn't it. Um, even low power AGP 8X cards like my GeForce FX 5200 uh, would not work. Um, same with my GeForce 4 MX 440 uh, AGP 8X wouldn't work. Um, AGP 4X only, it appears. Uh, that being said, uh, it is an SD RAM board and it does seem to be limited to Palomino. Um, I tried Let's see, where is it? Here we go. I tried this Palomino first. This is my 2100 Plus. Uh, it's questionable. I need to test it in a board that I know works with it, because it keeps giving me problems. Um, however, this one did work. Uh, this is a 1700 Plus. No, 1800 Plus, sorry. This is a 1533 MHz Palomino, and it worked beautifully. Like, really beautifully. And this thing just flies with this Palomino in it. It's not in it at the moment, because I'm actually testing, uh, or I just finished up testing a uh, Thunderbird 850, because there's somebody in the Pixel Pipes Discord who's got this board, or a very similar cousin to this board, with a Duron 900 soldered into it. And they were curious about performance versus uh, the non-soldered, the non -soldered, the socketed version. Turns out it's pretty similar, if, if you use the same drivers. So, my final thoughts on this board. Um, I really dig it. I really like it. It is it is a weird board, and really its only downside is the AGP 8X compatibility issue, which I think is just a chipset issue, because um, I've got a secret side project uh, that I can't show you right now uh, that's using a, 
a Sys 735, and that works just fine with um, with AGP 8x cards. So I think it's just a chipset bug that they fixed later in a later chipset. But also, like it's an it's a SD RAM board, and the you know the BIOS is from 2001, and it only supports Palomino. There's definitely a performance ceiling here, and I think AGP 4x really fits well with it. It um, it suits the board nicely. You know, and that doesn't mean that you're limited to, like, a low-performance, you know, socket A system here. Like, with a 1.5 gigahertz Palomino and the GeForce 256 DDR, um, this thing just cranks out frames, um, hundreds of frames per second, well, over 100 frames per second, in um, expendable 800 by 600 32-bit color, um, well over 100 frames per second in Quake 3 at 800 by 600 32-bit color. Like, it's... It's not slow. <laughs> it's definitely not slow. Um, I don't know. I like it. I like it. It's a weird little nugget, and I'm glad I've got it, and uh, maybe I'll turn it into some kind of a, a time capsule. Because it's really a... Like, it's the ultimate year 2001 gaming PC. I'll, you know I should try and run XP on it and see how it does. Because um, it might be a perfect early XP gaming machine. Oh, and before I go, I didn't mention it before, but don't ever buy this cooler. There's a bunch of them floating around on eBay. They're a scam. <laughs> like, it does operate as a cooler. It's definitely got a thermal cap. It, it can't handle some of the hotter running chips. Um, but also, like, the way it's designed, the way the mount is designed, um, it's basically guaranteed to destroy one of your Athlons at some point. If it doesn't destroy the Athlon, it's going to destroy the motherboard when you try and remove it. Don't buy this cooler. I only have it here because it's my backup socket A cooler. I was going to say, like, yeah, you can probably pick this up on eBay for cheap, but I did some searching on eBay, and uh, they are not cheap at all. Um, because, of course, PC Chips is as much of a bargain basement brand as they were, they're recognizable nowadays, and people collect them just because they're PC Chips boards. Um, ECS made a version of this. It, the layout looks identical. Uh, with the exception of, I think they also added a, a CNR slot on the on the left side here, along with the audio modem riser. There was a communication network riser on this side. Otherwise, I think it's, it's an identical board. Anyway, um, yeah, if you run across one of these uh, Sys Socket A single chip chipsets, um, I, I would say don't be afraid. Um, they're not bad. Just know that you're going to be limited on what CPUs you can run on it. You know, Thunderbird or Palomino, basically. I didn't test Thoroughbred on this. I, I wouldn't trust it to run Thoroughbred. It seems to have trouble with higher clock CPUs. Um, but yeah, the 1533 megahertz Palomino 1800 Plus was very good on this board. It made it a, a pretty pretty quick little machine. So yeah, that's it for me tonight. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And uh, take care of each other. And have a good night.